22nd and spring break is over. <laughs> I'm on my way to Starbucks. I wasn't supposed to go. Um, I skipped working out this morning because my intention was to wake up early, um, skip a workout and get to work a little bit earlier because uh, everybody went back to school yesterday. I took the day off as a birthday present to myself. Um, and so I like to get there a little bit earlier when I have a sub to read the sub note. And I won't have a prep today because Taylor and I have to go around to the seventh grade classes today, tomorrow, and Thursday during what would normally be my prep period to announce that yearbook and leadership applications are open. Make sure kids know the difference between the two, answer any like casual questions. Um, so I won't have a prep period. But then, as I was getting ready, um, I just decided suddenly that I should, you know, ease myself back into work with a treat, and here we are on our way to Starbucks. Plus, I have a free drink, so I'm going to pick that up. I have a free drink and then some. Uh, but as far as how my spring break went, it went really well. I didn't do anything. Um, I spent some time with my family because my sister was in town. We had our aunt's funeral that passed. Um, about a month or so ago and I did little things like I had to get my car serviced I got my nails done I had a therapy appointment but a lot of it was just me working out walking woofy lounging about doing things at my own leisure I did have to do some work because I had to finish grading all the narratives for um, the sub yesterday and I had to make sure everything was set up for the application process to be open and automated. I feel like the camera's crooked. I'm sorry if it is, which I got done, but I didn't do a ton of work um, to the point where it actually felt like spring break was pretty slow. And what I realized, no, I didn't realize it. I've known this, but it just reiterates like when I have long breaks, it's like a good thing for me, but it's also a bad thing because then I just have a lot of time to ruminate. I'm a really good ruminator, which is not always the best thing for me to be doing. So it makes me a little nervous about summer break because I'm not teaching summer school. I'm not going on that trip. I have no travel plan because my trip to Egypt with Teach With Love was canceled due to just, you know, safety precautions. So I'm going to have a whole lot of free time to ruminate. Um, <laughs> and a part of me gets nervous about that because... Latani with too much time on her hands can be it could be it could be a situation so um and then Sunday was my birthday but it was also Easter so me and my mom and my dad we just went to breakfast and I really spent most of my birthday alone which is not the norm because it is also my mom's birthday and thank you to everyone who wished me and my mother a birthday on Instagram and so we normally spend the day together shopping but it was Easter so a lot of things were closed and it was rainy um, but it was kind of perfect because I really felt like this birthday I did just want to be alone and kind of reflect on how I was going to be handling myself in life in the year to come so I lounged on the couch with Wolfie did some online shopping for myself continued to watch more documentaries that was also what I did a lot of during spring break not highbrow documentaries really I watched the Wendy Williams documentary I watched the Bama Rush documentary I watched the Freak Nick documentary I watched the Penthouse documentary and now I'm in the middle of the Dark Side of the Nine or Dark Side of the 2000s documentary. I also watched the Quiet on the Set documentary about Nickelodeon. So yeah, um, but that's how I spent my birthday watching documentaries, online shopping, and really trying to think of like how to just mm, keep myself like in a good mental and emotional place um, in the year ahead and going forward. Um. I mean, that's pretty much the gist of things. I feel like there was something else I wanted to say, but I'm not remembering that right now. But um, as far as today is concerned, I don't know how much talking I'll be able to do throughout the day because, like I said, I have no prep period. And then, of course, I'll be teaching. And then after school, I have a meeting, a PBIS meeting. 
I'm trying to remove, remove myself. I'm actively working on removing myself from that committee from next year, and I'm pretty sure I'll be successful at that. And then I have to go home uh, because I have a tax appointment with TurboTax at 4.30. Um, I ended up owing some taxes <laughs> because I don't know where I put the income that I earned over the years from social media, but I didn't put it in the right place or I didn't report it correctly. So I owe taxes. So I've been paying that. Um, and I also think that means when I file my taxes right now, all that I put in TurboTax so far, I'm supposed to get a refund, but I'm pretty sure that refund is just going to be sucked up by the taxes that I owe. So before I file, I want to talk to someone that can tell me where do I put this income that I get from social media so that I don't find myself in this situation again, because I really, I'd rather have my tax refund than tonight. So, um... So it's going to be a busy day. But um, I'm happy that I have spring break. I am a little nervous because uh, there are no breaks between now and summer break. And there's a lot of things that I personally have to do uh, with leadership and the end of the year. So I'm a little nervous about that. Um, and I'll finish that thought when I get back. I thought my food item wasn't there because they put my egg bites in this little pup cup cup. Um, and then here's my drink. The complexion is right. This is what you want to see. But let's see. It is a 10 out of 10. Um, it's the iced coffee version of the vanilla sweet cream cold brew. Um, but anyway, I think what I was saying was I'm... I feel rested and that's fantastic and that's great uh, but I am a little nervous about just the next six seven weeks because a lot has to happen um, the rally is April the 12th which we've done before but I'm always gonna have anxiety about a rally because I never feel like the kids are ready and then they prove me wrong the color run is April 19th which we've never had one of those before it's the first one I'm in charge of it and of course I want to make sure that it's successful that we sell as much as we can and that people enjoy it then there's fifth grade orientation I couldn't tell you what date that is I just know it comes after the color run so right now my mind is not super focused on that but I need to get started with that and we're gonna have a market day which we also have never had before. And I'm working on that with the school counselor, um, but that involves like bringing some food trucks and promoting it and all of that. Now, again, a lot of this is my own doing. I created these events, um, so I can't be mad at anyone but myself, but still. And then of course it's the end of the year and I teach eighth grade. So there's end of the year eighth grade activities and promotion and teenagers that suddenly think they're grown. So they are really doing the most. Um, So, as I woke up from my slumber at night last night with that anxiety, I just had to remind myself, you're going to have to take things one task at a time because that's all you can do and all you can do is the best that you can do. And you're usually your toughest critic, so you'll probably be fine, but <laughs> let's just take a deep breath and let's relax. So I'm at school. I will at some point also show you couple of things that I got for my birthday that are teacher related that you might be interested in and down the line I'll show you the other things because they're coming in the mail but um, I did treat myself quite nicely for my birthday so I'm gonna go and I will talk to you guys later hello hold on I need to mute the TV Sorry, um, it was an interview with Shannon Doherty who played the character Brenda Walsh on Beverly Hills 90210. And if you've been following me a little bit on Instagram, I haven't been super consistent with that. I have been watching all of Beverly Hills 90210 because that was my show. Um, and I actually was trying to watch the very last episode today, but I've been watching it on 
is it Paramount Plus? I think Paramount Plus, but what the problem is is that there are seasons where there's episodes missing because they don't have the copyrights to the music or something that occurred in that episode. And one of the episodes that's missing is the very last episode. So I found a link to watch it on the internet, but it is like the worst bootleg of anything I've ever seen. So I started that this morning and I couldn't get through it because it stopped streaming it and I couldn't really take much more of Tori Spelling's acting because she, I had said in an Instagram story a couple weeks ago that in the later seasons of Beverly Hills 90210, Tori Spelling really fell into this whole like baby voice acting that she was not doing in the first couple of seasons. And when I tell you this last episode, <laughs> it's, I can't even describe it. It's, it's ridiculous. So I think God knew that my nerves weren't prepared to watch an episode of her baby talk like that and he just stopped streaming it for me so it's kind of ironic that um i was just looking at a little clip of shannon doherty talk about like her cancer struggle um but that's not why i turned the camera on i really turned it on to say hi in the vlog for today try and show you what i was intending to show you earlier as far as how today went with it me being back to work after having a week and a day off for spring break it was a very eventful day um, in some good ways and then in some not so good ways uh, that I can't really go into detail about but uh, the not so good things didn't directly affect me it was just some stuff happened on campus today but uh, <laughs> it was almost as if I forgot how to like teach and run a classroom and run my day I just felt like kind of discombobulated all day um, first things first I thought Taylor and I had the presentations at the seventh grade classrooms for leadership in your book starting today that actually didn't start today it starts tomorrow but what we did have which was a surprise to both of us was an IEP um, at 8 15 that neither one of us seemed to know about so um, I still didn't end up having a prep because Taylor has a class first period your book is first period for her and it's my prep period so then they actually sent a sub to cover her class so she could attend the IEP but then I told her like I'll just take it if you have something for the sub to do have them do that um so I had an unexpected IEP and then after that I just felt like I couldn't quite get my bearings like class went fine I'm not gonna get into a whole bunch of detail about what we did in class today because I want to get off camera soon <laughs> so the day went okay it, it was kind of nice to be productive and like the hardest part is getting up getting dressed and getting there and once I was there I was fine um I came home I had my meeting after school for PBIS and then I came home I had my tax appointment at 4 30 and I spent about two plus hours not necessarily doing my taxes but like finalizing my taxes i use TurboTax. i think i said this morning i didn't file my social media income correctly um in a previous tax year so i ended up owing taxes so when i was talking to TurboTax today i was like where am i supposed to put this so i found out where to put it so that i don't <laughs> owe taxes for this tax year and um got that all filed away and then also really learned that i needed to be more diligent about viewing what I do on social media as like a secondary job and I use that phrase lightly because it's not like I'm it's not like a nine to five and it is very based on how I feel and when I feel like I want to upload but I do still generate income from it and so the tax person I was speaking to was like you need to make sure if you can also log some expenses like do you need the internet to upload um do you need your phone to like check your social media accounts and post and I was like I do so he's like you need to file that as an expense which I did and that helped um and then I had to call the IRS to make sure I knew what I needed to do for the taxes that were owed and by the time I was done with that I was just mentally tired so I took Wolfie out came home and just decided I needed to go to Ulta because there were a couple things I needed to get that I didn't get over break so I'll show one of them to you I really need to set you down let's see okay let's pray nothing major but this is one product that I got that I've been using for a long time Taylor actually introduced it to me and I really do feel like it works it is this um, Lancome mascara primer I don't 
don't know if it's called Sills Booster, C-I-L-L-S Booster XL. I don't know. Um, but it's basically what you put on before you put your mascara on. And I really do feel like it makes a difference um, in terms of how your lashes look with the mascara. They have this size, which is the extra large, and then they have a smaller one. It's kind of pricey, but I feel like it's worth it. It does last a while. And then I just needed some more mascara. I really like this one. This is L'Oreal Voluminous original i always get my mascara in the blackest black so i got that i also stopped at bath and body works because my mom and i went shopping yesterday and we went to a bath and body works and all i need is some more of this body spray poppy um because that's the scent i have with the lotion the shower gel i can't wear perfume without breaking out so i always rely on body spray and i can't even spray this body spray directly on my skin it has to be sprayed on my clothing otherwise i will break out and apparently this is out of season for the time being and this is all that i have left can you see that not much so we're just gonna have to make that last as long as we can then i went to panera because i needed to get my free birthday cookie so i got that and now i'm home so i'm here to do what I said I was going to do, which was to show you a couple of things that I got for my birthday that are teacher related. I have some other things that I will show you later because they're not like teacher related and I'm tired. So let me go get them. Okay, so the first thing was a gift for my sister um, per my request, like I sent her the link. So I just got a new uh, teaching lanyard. I'm just trying to make sure my school ID doesn't show. So you can see that it has like a little leopard print heart. Let me move that out of the way. And then books. Hopefully it's coming across on camera. I don't know if me doing that whole old school thing helps in any way, um, but it's really cute. That's the back side. There we go. That's the back side of it. And it's got some beads on it. Um, I still have my Starbucks one, but I wanted this one and I got that. And then the other thing, I do feel kind of guilty getting this because do I need this? No. And I have lost count <laughs> as to how many of these that I have and I like truly cannot stop myself. So it's like, do I just lean into the fact that this is what I do or do I really make a stronger effort to stop myself? Um, and that is, can you guess what it is? Uh, what it is, is it's another teacher bag. <laughs> so it looks like this. It has that like quilted pattern. And what is this material called? I don't know. It's like that jacket material. It is from Poppies and Peonies, which is the same place I got my backpack from. And I was on the website because my sister wanted something from there for her birthday. And I was looking and of course this popped up because this is a new item. And so it was a pre-order. So, and I, when I got my backpack, I really did contemplate getting a backpack in this color because I do like this color. And I think it's a nice color to be carrying your schoolwork in for the spring. And um, I did a little research and thought, maybe I do need that in my life. So I use it for the first time today. Today was like to test run because it is kind of on the bigger side. Can you guys see that? There we go, it's that big. Um, but it does carry quite a bit. I'm gonna show you the inside. The tags are still in it because like I said, we were on a trial run today. Uh, but it does have a space for your laptop. Mine was in here earlier today. It's downstairs, stairs, excuse me, because I was using it to do my taxes. Here's the tag. It has a pocket here. That's just my battery charger for my camera. A pocket here. Um, another pocket there. Where is This is where my hand warmer is because my hands get cold. And the thing that really got me, and I'm going to try my best to show this to you is and i don't know if it's this one or not no it's not i'll show it to you though in a second um but there's a pocket here and then this pocket oh maybe that is it this pocket here is actually made for you to fit a stanley cup in it because it has a little slit so you see how my fingers are popping through right there that is for the stanley cup slit or the stanley the stanley cup arm to poke through i tried it 
because I thought, oh, that's great. And it just wasn't for me because it just made my bag heavy. Like if you have water in your cup and you're carrying it around and you have a laptop, it was just too heavy for me. Um, so that was one of the big selling points is I was thinking I could put my Stanley cup in there. And that's one less thing for me to physically have to carry. Then it also has two zipper pockets on the side that have some pretty good depth to it. This is where I keep my camera case or where I kept it today. So the camera case is this big and that fit inside there. So there's one on this side. There's also one on that side. And then there's this back pocket, which is where I put my lanyard. And I think that's it. So it is comfortable. There we go. It is comfortable. One of the reviews that I read, which I can see it happening is because the material is so soft, this can like slide down very easily. Uh, it wasn't really a big deal for me today because I'm not walking around for long distances with this on my shoulder. I'm basically walking from my house to my car, from my car to my classroom with my laptop and laptop case in it. It wasn't too heavy for my shoulder. Um, and really besides that, I was like, is it going to be too big? But I don't feel like it is. So poppies and peonies. I'm going to try my best. I always intend to. Um, to put the link in the description box, I will also, if you're interested in the lanyard, see about putting that in the description box. If I forget, just send me a message and remind me and I will get it there later. Um, but yeah, all in all, a good Tuesday, a little hectic, but that's kind of to be expected when you've been out for a week and then you come back and I'm glad I made it. So I'm going to go, I was going to say I'm going to go home now, but I am home. I'm going to go take a shower now. See that? I'm going to go take a shower now. I'm going to use my aromatherapy, eat dinner, and I have to get some work done for tomorrow. I'm kind of feeling like I might have to skip the gym tomorrow because it's 8 o'clock and I haven't done what I need to do and I need to get my mind right because tomorrow I for sure do not have a prep. So I'm also going to add a picture of this outfit today just because today was a fashion challenge or a fashion risk for me. I did a half tuck in this shirt, which I don't normally do. I've never done it before. And I feel like I pulled it off. So I'm going to share it with you. I post it on Instagram. You know, some people liked it. Some people didn't, but it is what it is. But anyway, I will see you guys at some point tomorrow. Hi there. <laughs> Hello. It's Thursday, April the 4th. Um, didn't talk to you guys at all yesterday because I just, I didn't have... I didn't have the bandwidth. I didn't have the emotional capacity, the mental capacity, none of that. Um, yesterday, I just got to a point where I was really just quite overwhelmed um, because I just suddenly realized all the things that really are about to occur within the next week and then just how much has to be done between now and the end of the year, which I think I mentioned on Tuesday when I vlogged. But even on that day, I didn't realize how quick some of these things were coming up. I, I didn't, it didn't even dawn on me that open house is next Wednesday. I was informed of that by a leadership student. Like I knew open house was soon-ish, but I had just um, been in denial as to how soon it was. So yesterday I was simultaneously panic, panicking, excuse me, about the fact that open house is next Wednesday, that the rally is next Friday, that the color run is the following Friday after that, that grades need to be finalized by next Tuesday. Um, I still need to do the fifth grade orientation and market day. And I was fine most of the day. And then when I got home, <laughs> that day I just was like I need I just needed to be quiet like it was one of those times where I'm like I need a quiet mind so even when I took Wolfie on a walk I didn't want to listen to any music I didn't want to listen to an audiobook I just needed to really um, have a quiet mind and um, get some things done and then by the end of the night once again I was hormonal and I just was like to tears and I think it was just like being overwhelmed and feeling like and this is me fantasizing about what it's like to either be married or have a live-in partner. I wanted to come home and like have somebody solve all my problems or tell me everything's gonna be okay or say something to make me feel better. That's like my fantasized version of what it's like to be in a consistent relationship. 
the real me knows that that's not what uh, is happening all the time for people that are in that. Like, you know, you go home and sometimes the person that's there is just another stressor for one way or another. But I had my moment. I had my hormonal moment. I woke up this morning and said let's let's take a pause and really figure out do you need to be as stressed as you are so my moment of clarity was yes grades do need to be finalized next week but most for the most part your grades are updated there's a couple of things you need to grade they aren't that time consuming the big things you needed to grade like the rough drafts have already been done so and it's just progress reports so you're really not in that bad of shape um yes the rally is next friday and like i said earlier um, on Tuesday, you never think that you guys are ready, but you guys always pull it off as a class. And so you'll be fine there. Um, yes, the color run is the following week and you've never done this before and you've never seen it before. But as of right now, I know we've sold over 200 color run packages. And um, my stress is based on the fact where I'm like, I the goal is to sell um 600 and that's a long shot like that was like that's us selling every single package that we had purchased for and even when we purchased things we knew we're not going to sell out all the packages so that already was an unrealistic goal um but i had to have a moment and someone my aide said this to me she's like to sell 200 that's pretty um that's pretty good for something that's never occurred on the campus before like no one here has any sort of visual of what that's going to look like there's never been any word of mouth so this is something totally new and so i'm like 200 i'm gonna pat myself on the back for that i do know if we don't sell them all out um i'm gonna see what it's like to sell packages i don't know if we'll sell them the day of that feels like it's going to be a little too chaotic for me so we probably won't do that um but we will have the materials for next year and no one's expecting much from this at all even the office, even the school secretary was like, look, the first one, it might be, it might have to be a flop because no one knows what this is. And the next year we'll know exactly when to start promoting it and all of that. So I had to let that stress go. Fifth grade orientation really isn't that hard. I do have a lot of it already preset. That's probably one of the smaller things that we do in this leadership class. And then um, open house. I have, you know, my room is, it's pretty, it's pretty nice like there's student work on the wall there's things that i know i'm gonna have out and put out um i know what i want the kids to do so it's just a matter of like putting it out putting it up what work samples they're gonna put on display it's all very solvable um so i don't really need to be too stressed about that and yeah so i'm really just trying to remember that when i feel that anxiety rising up in me that i have to get rational with tanya to show up <laughs> so all that to say I couldn't vlog yesterday I just didn't have it today I'm feeling much better um, what we've done in the past couple of days we started this book yesterday the silence that binds us this is the last book that we're going to read um, my one of my big goals this year was to bring in more diverse reads and one of my successes of this year is that I have read well after this I will be able to say we read all four books that I had planned for and all four books touched on a different cultural experience or ethnic group or um, group of people that we don't normally get to read about with our standard curriculum what's interesting about this one is it, it does have sensitive topics like there is a character in the book that commits suicide um, and it touches on some of the historical tensions between Asian Americans and black Americans. The main character is Chinese American. Her best friend is black racially, but her family is Haitian. And there's some things that come up that kind of causes them to kind of confront some of the tensions or some of the different viewpoints on how things should be handled um, when it comes to uh, discriminatory practices social justice and how the two different groups view those things and so before we read it i i am based on the the story in the story basically the main character's older brother um gets into princeton and seems to have everything going for himself but he ends up committing suicide because he didn't get into stanford and so because of that i knew before we read it i wanted to make sure kids understood like why someone would do that and i knew that i needed them to understand um 
the model minority myth because that is talked about in this book later on in it. So yesterday I showed them a video that I found that talked about what the model minority myth was, um, what kind of stereotypes that perpetuates up on Asians, um, and how it's perpetuated by society, where it came from, but also that some Asian families do internalize the idea of we have to be high achieving in everything that we do um, and nothing but the best is accepted so that they understood why a character after getting into Princeton but not getting into Stanford would feel like they need to commit suicide. So I looked for a few videos over spring break. I picked the one. Um, there's an interview with the author that I may show at the end of the book uh, because it also talks about why she wrote this book and what her experience was um, and all of that. So I did that yesterday. We read the first chapter yesterday and then we read several more chapters today. So far the kids seem to be into it. Before I started reading, I did call the counselor and said to her, we're gonna start this book. I had already told my kids it does um, discuss suicide. So if that's a sensitive topic for you, let me know and I can make some other arrangements. But I also called the counselor to say, is there anything else or called the counselor to ask, is there anything else I should say before we actually get into reading the book? And she said, um, she said, yeah, you might wanna open up the conversation and have them brainstorm ideas of what can a student do if while we're reading this book, they feel like they need some kind of mental or emotional break. What are some things they could do? What are some coping mechanisms? And she's like, and just because you have, establish a certain classroom culture in your class let them generate those ideas and put those up on the board and let kids know like while we're reading this book these are acceptable ways to kind of give yourself the mental and emotional break that you may need if the book starts to feel a little too heavy so they came up with a few and not a lot of kids participate in giving ideas but they came up with you know step outside the room if you need to step in, into the pod which is this middle area that's attached to my class uh, that links four classes together uh, put the book down put your head down um, one of them said put maybe headphones on and so I just accepted everything that they said as an option and I said these are your coping strategies that you have and I even said for me I have to be very mindful of it too because I am I really am one of those teachers that I don't love it when kids put their head down while we're reading because at the middle school level, a lot of times they just end up going right on to sleep <laughs> and not paying attention. So I said, I'm gonna have to be okay with that while we read this book and just assume that maybe the student is taking a mental break. So we talked about that and we also talked about the fact that if you have a classmate that has to take one of those mental breaks because we ranked the ideas they had on a scale of one to 10, one being like, it wouldn't be obvious that someone was taking a mental break to 10 where it would be very obvious. And so I said, if you notice one of your classmates taking a mental break, we also aren't, you know, turning to them at some point and saying, it wasn't that big of a deal. I can't believe you needed to take a break. These aren't even real people because that's not our place. We can check in with them, see how they're doing and see if they're okay, but we're not passing judgment on their need to take a break. And so far they've been good. Uh, in history, we are still in chapter 12 where they are being presented with different presidents throughout the earlier years of the country that had different foreign policy dilemmas. Today we looked at President Madison. His dilemma was should he declare war with Great Britain because Britain was attacking American ships still and occupying a portion of Canada that the United States felt, felt that they needed. And so now the kids um, tomorrow are gonna present their recommendations to President Madison. Um, and they do actually go up to the class or to the front of the class and look at President Madison and directly address him. They've been doing a really good job with it. Like they're thinking it through. Um, they seem to be into it because even when we finished working for the day, I could hear kids kind of saying, what option did you guys pick? Like, I think you should do this. I think you should do that. So I will take that as a win. Then school ended and I had two hours of rally practice, which just ended not too long ago. Um, I cannot emphasize how important rally practice is. For us, one of the biggest things that we need to get out of rally practice is the games, like game setup. How do we want it set up? What can we preset? Does the game work? Do we need to alter the games? Do the directions to the game make sense? And that stuff really takes time. Um, and so we spend a lot of time, there's a game that we're supposed to play called Snake, and it's cute. 
<laughs> it just looks a little hard to play. So we have to figure that out tomorrow. So all in all a positive day, Taylor and I are still going around to seventh grade classes to talk about applications being open for yearbook and leadership. And speaking of which, just for my own curiosity, I'm gonna see how many applications we have so far. We both take about 30 students max, uh, to be quite honest. We kind of would prefer to be able to take a smaller class because we really just want high quality kids. And when you push it to 30, sometimes you're getting kids that just barely made it by the skin of their teeth. Um, but the office wants us to have classes that are about 30 so that the other elective classes aren't impacted with higher class sizes, if that makes sense. So we try, we're trying. <laughs> Um, so far there's a total of 24 or 23 applications put in there and Taylor and I use the same, um, application. So let me sort and see what's yearbook versus leadership. Um, most of them right now are leadership and one, two, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen are leadership, and the rest are yearbook. So, and it always happens that way, and it's kind of frustrating for Taylor. Um, but we also understand it because in yearbook you do have to, you do have to write. <laughs> and in our one of the presentations, I was like. It's not like you guys are writing an essay, so don't think of it like that. You're writing like fun school-based stories, um, things like that. So, you know, hopefully her applications pick up and we can go from there, but, so we'll see. He, I'm just looking at this one student that applied. He applied for, yeah. So with that being said, I'm gonna clean up my things. I'm gonna file these newer sets of color run purchases and then i'm gonna go home and i have to go home and do some more work so that i can stay relatively relatively sane so i don't think that i'll vlog when i get home and i'm sorry i haven't really been able to vlog during the day because i don't have any preps these past couple days because i'm out doing my um seventh grade tour talking about leadership and then I'm teaching and then I just had rally practice. So there hasn't been a whole lot to capture. Um, and I don't know. Hmm. I'm thinking just to make my life easier that this might be another uh, multi-day vlog. Um, but before I forget, Mr. Lopez, if you are watching, I checked my P.O. box and I wanna say thank you for my um, birthday note as well as my little Starbucks treat. I appreciate you keeping my habit alive. Um, so thank you. So I don't know, I'm not gonna close the vlog here because I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna edit tonight. So I will see you guys tomorrow for another day. Okay, it's Saturday. It's probably a little bit afternoon and I'm overly dressed for this walk that I'm taking with you on because I thought it was going to be colder outside than what it is. So excuse the dramatics of this outfit, but I hate being cold. And honestly, I'm just here to close <laughs> this vlog. It's very haphazard and sudden. I think the last time I vlogged was Thursday and I was supposed to vlog yesterday. And I just couldn't, like this week, you guys, it's just been, <laughs> thank God spring break was last week and I got some time to rest and I took that Monday off, but this week has been super hectic. Um, haven't really had a lot of time to myself, especially cause Taylor and I did those leadership talks uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, which means I had no prep. And it's just been a lot of things going on um, <laughs> with students and staff members and uh, all of it required a lot of mental <laughs> work. So by the time the day was done, I just didn't have the energy to like vlog 
let alone edit. And um, to be honest with you, I forced myself to take this walk today because I woke up this morning pretty much on the wrong side of the bed and having some not so affirming thoughts <laughs> about myself. And um, I was very tempted to just stay in the bed all day, but I decided that that wouldn't be the best thing for me to do. So I pulled myself together, put on some workout clothes, and I'm getting woofy out in this walk. I do already feel better, so yay me for doing that for me. And so I decided on the walk, let me just close out this vlog and like shut this week down. Um, and uh, just maybe start anew next week. Uh, as far as the rest of the day, I'm just gonna allow myself to do whatever I feel like doing. That could equate to me just laying on the couch and watching TV. It could equate to me doing some work. I don't really know. Um, but I'm just here to close the vlog and <laughs> kind of say hi on a Saturday. And I'm gonna stop talking now because I already feel myself starting to break a sweat and all this winter wear. <laughs> but if you enjoy this vlog, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe. If you'd like to leave a comment, please do. And as always, I hope that you're well. And if you're not well, please be well. And I will see you guys in the next vlog.